All right, Saturday, three days till the shoot. Actually, uh, no, today's Friday. See, I gotta get my days straight here, Steve. We are going to our uh, framework storage unit to pick up our gear. Yeah, I mean, it's ideal to have as fewer vendors as possible, but it often is the case that you have a bunch of vendors. So we're gonna have a lot of shit today. Let's start by labeling everything framework. Should we bring our C-stands? Nailed it. We don't need them. For 5D, it doesn't have a lens on it. Yeah. Throw that in there, would you? Good, we should just bring them. It just goes away. Not bringing the dados? No. You're telling me you don't wanna hit those keg canisters with dados? Don't have the power. I'm not trying to shut down all your ideas, but I was like, that. we're not gonna be able to use it. All right, here's the table. Oh boy. Our G&E guys are gonna love this. They're gonna open up that case and be like, oh, this is bullshit. Look at all this stuff. How many times in this dock is James gonna say, I hate gear? I don't care. I hate gear. This is Late Night Cap. <laughs> we'll hang it from a pipe or something. And then these, you know, all get cool Edison bulbs. And then we got like six of these. This is a Leprechaun. It's essentially a mini dimmer pack. Has two 15 amp inputs. And then you have six different channels of DMX dimmable in the board. And we have five of these that we're gonna be ut utilizing for our tungsten units. Uh, don't worry about that, man. Th those guys are always annoyed. It it's their state of being. He's not annoyed at you, man. He's just, th that's how they are. Dope, dude. See you soon, man. Drive safe. Okay, we're rolling into Adorama Rentals in Brooklyn. The majority of our camera and lighting order is from Adorama. And then we have some specialty items like the staging and the trusses being delivered later by a separate vendor. What we always wanna do is load the truck correctly. We wanna roll on all the hampers, we wanna strap everything down. It's a bit of a game of Tetris. You obviously wanna think about what's coming off first. You wanna keep your departments together if you can. Our next guest is gonna be the closest cameraman to me, Palermo, everybody, Palermo! We're building five C300 Mark IIs. So we got two 30 to 300, these big boys, and then a couple of the 70 to 120s. We're gonna be shooting 4K Cine Log 2 in camera. So the most dynamic, the most flat, gives me the most power and color correction in post. And then in the studio, we're actually switching a 1080p line that needs a LUT baked into it because it has graphics and also is shown to the audience live and we don't wanna show them a flat image. We have four cards per camera. So that should be enough even for 4K. Yep, yep. In camera, we're rolling 4K Cine Log 2. In the live switch, we're 1080 um, with a LUT. Should work. What's up, dudes? What's going on? Missing um, a very important item from our rental. The truss is coming from another vendor that we haven't worked with before. I even called and asked if they were going to bring the wrenches to build the truss with. Um, they gave us the wrenches, but not the bolts. Whew, so we got a lot still to do. Um, we had a major mistake with the order. The vendor sent us all our box truss and no bolts. So um, we're kind of held up. <laughs> we can't really load in. The grips and electrics are making a plan, rolling everything out out there, the cable and all the power, making diagrams and really getting set. So I'm trying to get our camera engineering as set as possible, as much run and right, laying right there so whenever they're done we can just drop in and plug in and try and make up some of the time we're losing. You just gotta keep calm and keep moving forward, I think. You know, don't know what else to do. We had a plan with the truss. We were gonna do an L truss and then it became, it was a T truss and then it was an L truss and then it was a T truss again for a second. But when we got in today, we kind of looked at it and realized we wanted to do something else. So we went for two goal posts. We decided to go with truss in the location because it's a live stage, so people are standing around in the audience. So we don't want cables on the floor and we don't want a lot of clutter. Truss allows you to run the cables up into and through the truss and keep things off the ground. I feel like there's no room for a jib in here and if you put 60 people here, it's gonna feel insane. I just gotta kinda give more room for the jib and people. Now we have a bunch of crew guys standing around who aren't able to move forward, who aren't able to do anything. Ladies and gentlemen, the bolts have arrived. Let's get to work, guys. 
things can always change, including the day of. So you plan as much as you possibly can so that you can be ready for that change. The way you can really tell a serious gaffer is they've got these inordinate sized forearms. Do you see this forearm? Look at that, that is a good gaffer. It's important for your shoot that you hire the appropriate amount of crew. The type of crew you have is always relative to your shoot, but the hierarchy more or less stays the same. The DP's at the helm of the crew. Starting with G&E, you might have heard a phrase, one and one, two and two, something like that. That refers to the number of G&E people you have. A one and one is a gaffer and a key grip. A two and two is a gaffer with a Best Boy electric and a key grip with a Best Boy grip. A three and three would be a key, a best, and an additional. Also, once in a while, you'll have a swing like we do on this job. See that? That's like a stressed out piece of copper. Copper doesn't like to be stressed out. It's one of the most valuable resources in the world. Treat it with respect. The DOP is uh, also in charge of the other departments. And this one, because we have so much live queuing, we also have an LD, a lighting designer and programmer. So I'm Andrew Sharwath. I'm the lighting designer and the programmer for this pilot. Also underneath the DP is you have the camera department. Um, for us, that's five operators. We have two assistant cameras and one DIT. This is something a lot of people cut out, but is absolutely crucial that you have. And then lastly, in our, our crew, we have an art department. So essentially, we have this little pyramid that everybody's looking back towards the director and DOP to make decisions so that they can all do their job. It also helps to have a director like Steve who will jump in in every department if you don't stop him. Have the scissor live down there, get that up, rig that and check that out. Our set for Late Nightcap breaks into three different stages. For the monologue on the main stage, we have five cameras, two of which with 30 to 300 cine zoom lenses, and three with 17 to 120 cine servo lenses, one of which is on a jib, one is handheld, and three are on sets of sticks. For in-studio shenanigans, one of the singles cameras becomes handheld. So we have two handheld 17 to 120 cameras. We have our two long zooms with the 30 to 300 lenses that turn around and act as the singles on the same camera riser. And then one jib that flips around and serves as the wide for the contestants. For the band, we again have three 17 to 120 cine servo lenses, one of which is still on the jib, one of which is still handheld, and one that serves as a constant medium shot on the singer. We also have the two 30 to 300 with Micro Four Studio Control uh, Canon zoom lenses. These serve as our flavor shots and super close ups, and to give us one more level of variation because we don't have room for a steady cam we threw a Canon 5D Mark III on a Rhino slider that just palindromes on the low angle front of the stage as a variation on the wide shot. Uh, this is the control center. We got ETC ion that we're running all the lights through. Uh, we got all kinds of gear. We got tungsten gear. We got a lot of LED gear. All the LED stuff is Ari, and it's really fantastic stuff. We can control the color temperature from everything right here down to a single Kelvin. And also these LED sky panels don't shift color as they dim. I love these lights. Oh, they're fantastic. When we're troubleshooting, we're focusing, getting ready and stuff, I use a uh, remote interface. This is Alienware's OCS RFR. Do we want to swap that uh, S30 and S60 real fast? I can do all the things that the console can do right from my phone. Uh, they just re-blocked this situation, so we're gonna relight. The sky panels are working as most of our key lights for all of the segments except for the band. All three stages in the show have a very different feel. For the main stage, we're going for a flat front light with a little bit of an edge and then contrasted background with some atmosphere. The in-studio shenanigans stage, we did a 360 lighting plot, really simple with four airy sky panels, two S60s and two S30s, so that there's a little bit of fall off in depth. The band setup is a lot more dynamic. We also chose to add some pipe up top so that we could put some practical lights in it. The lighting from those bulbs isn't for the artists themselves, it's more of the atmosphere. In here, we're doing pretty well. 
great. So, this is the schematic I drew up. Simple multi-viewer. Chimmy into the HyperDeck. Routing the Terranex control surface. Reclock our signal. Right, so they're gonna get the DMCC. Right resolution at the right frame rate. The Terranex 2D that does conversions. Wireless return, segmenting the different parts of the workflow. Dencers on top of this cold box. It's outputting 2398. One return line for program going back out. Simultaneously, the iMac's also gonna be networked into the back end of the switcher. Debug them all at once. Hanging in there? I mean, makes me a little nervous. So, wrap it up. <laughs> Shit, dude, we're just getting started. Um, this is all looking pretty good. I think what I wanna add is, I do wanna add in, I gotta move my pen out. I do want to add, so there's a four-way splitter in the thing, a return out of the control room, out of this line, we'll just split this line.